Namo Buthaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 33, uh, which is uh, the title is of the discourse is the longer discourse on the cowherd. Right? So basically in this discourse, Buddha is talking about what are the like 11 qualities that uh, is responsible for a mendicant or for a spiritual seeker for his growth, improvement or maturity in the teaching and training, right? So here Buddha in this uh, discourse is giving the uh, simile of a cowherd and how he manages his cattle. Similar way he is showing how a, a, a student on the Buddha's path should, what qualities he, he should have, he or she should have so that he, they can progress in the teaching, right? So, <coughs> so Buddha said in this discourse, a cowherd with 11 factors can't maintain and expand a herd of cattle. What 11 factors? It's when a cowherd doesn't know form, is unskilled in characteristics, doesn't pick out flies' eggs, doesn't dress the wounds, doesn't spread smoke, doesn't know the ford, doesn't know satisfaction, doesn't know the trail, is not skilled in pastures, milks dry, doesn't show extra respect to the bulls who are fathers and leaders of the herd. A cowherd with these 11 factors can't maintain and expand a herd of cattle. In the same way, a mendicant with 11 qualities can't achieve improvement or maturity. Right? Similar way Buddha is saying. Now, now Buddha is explaining all the things. Right? So Buddha, what he his, his unique quality was that he, he was very much able to kind of, you know, uh, 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 you know, use analogies and similes so that, you know, people can understand the teaching, the mendicants can understand the teaching. So now he is explaining what is form, what is food, what are characteristics. So Buddha says, how does a mendicant not know form? It's when a mendicant doesn't truly understand that all form is the four primary elements, earth, water, fire, air, right? All, for, all form derived from the four primary elements. That is how a mendicant doesn't know form. That means, so Buddha is basically, so it's all, no, it's all about uh, one who doesn't progress, he doesn't have these qualities. This means one who has these qualities progress on the path. So, Buddha is here talking about the importance of recognizing the four elements and everything is just a play of these four elements, an interaction of these four elements. Right? The air, water, air element, like for example, that I am sitting upright. So, there is basically the, the flow of air element in me that is making me sit upright. Otherwise, you know, as my air element reduces and the earth element rises, I will feel drowsy and I will fall in, fall to sleep right so basic important understanding here is that we need to understand that there is no independent self there is no independent soul it's only this all it's all a play of these you know elements that is happening right how is the mendicant not skilled in characteristics it's when a mendicant doesn't understand that a fool is characterized by their deeds and an astute person is characterized by their deeds so basically a mendicant it's important for the mendicant to understand that deeds, it's very, very important. And but that is what Buddha's knowledge was when he got awakened. Uh, during his enlightenment, when he got enlightenment, he got this knowledge that all sentient beings get the rebirth as per their deeds, right? So it's all about our karmas, our deeds that we do. So it's like when a mendicant realizes the impact of the deeds, then only he can, the importance of the deeds, then he can progress on the path. And how does a mendicant not pick out flies' eggs? It's when a mendicant tolerates a sensual, malicious or cruel thought that has arisen. They tolerate any bad, unskillful qualities that have arisen. They don't give them up, get rid of them, eliminate them and obliterate them. That's how a mendicant doesn't pick out flies' eggs. So basically how a cowherd has to keep picking up the cow's eggs from the buffalo's or cow's body so that they do not germinate and, you know, they do not uh, kind of breed. Similar way, a uh, uh, you know, our thoughts also come in our mind, right? Because of our past tendencies, right? Now, it's upon us to be mindful of those th thoughts. We should not give them more energy. We should just not flow in the, into them. We should be ever be watchful of our thoughts that they are coming in the body and if, in the mind. And if the negative thoughts are coming, we should not, we should be very careful not to let them, you know, uh, germinate, let them, you know, proliferate. Uh, there is another discourse, how to stop negative thoughts, uh, which is a separate discourse where Buddha has given 
five ways uh, on how to stop you know uh, negative thoughts so you can also check out that discourse uh, on my channel just type how to stop negative thoughts and you will find that discourse right okay then how does a mendicant not dress wounds right for example like a cow would have wounds so a uh, cow herd should be no able to know how to dress the wounds of the cow otherwise those wounds will become will increase and then it will cause more suffering to the cow and the cow can even die from the wounds so when a mendicant this is very very important friends just uh, we need to you know listen it and i also ask you to read the discourse at your end so that you also get your own insights from this discourse the link is there link for the full discourse is there in the description you can read that when a mendicant sees a sight with their eyes they get caught up in the features and details since the faculty of sight is left unrestrained bad unskillful qualities of covetousness and displeasure becoming become overwhelming they don't practice restraint they don't protect the faculty of sight and they don't achieve its restraint when they hear a sound with their ears smell an odor with their nose taste a flavor with their tongue feel a touch with their body know an idea with their mind they get caught up in the features and details since the faculty of the mind is left unrestrained bad unskillful unskillful qualities of covetousness and displeasureness displeasure become overwhelming they don't practice restraint and they don't protect the faculty of the mind and they don't achieve its restraint that's how a mendicant does not dress wounds so the important his thing here is and this ties in with the buddha's teaching on the dependent origination right see the buddha buddha's teaching is that see when sense i base for example comes in contact with the object outside definitely there is a contact and there is a feeling that arises but whether that you know feeling turns into a desire lust or whatever if we are mindful then if we are not mindful then we will kind of unconsciously those seeds of uh, desire or lust will manifest will will get water and they will rise up and then we continue in this cycle of volitional actions and this wheel of you know rebirth and everything is continuing but when we are mindful at this time that this right now what is happening is that the, there is a sense object a contact between sense object and the outside sense uh, eye base and the outside object what when we are mindful at that time then what happens is that that desire lust and all those things don't arise right so what we have to do is that we have to keep guarding our sense doors at all times right so for example an idea comes in the mind rather than just getting flown in that idea we keep being mindful that this idea is right now there so when we are mindful we are like stopping this unconscious flow right so so what happens is based on your past tendencies if you have a lot of lust then you will see objects outside you will see pornography and then it will uh, further uh, strengthen the seeds of pornography in you again you will watch porn and this whole thing goes on somewhere we need to stop and recognize that this is how these seeds that are there in me they are arising so if you are mindful they cannot you know overtake you so what we have to do is we have to strengthen our mindfulness on a daily basis make it so so strong that all these tendencies some some tendencies are very strong like anger or you know, the desire for sex you know these tendencies are very very strong strongly embedded in us so that much strong mindfulness we need to cultivate in our daily life so that we don't get swayed away it's like a flood that comes in a village so if your mindfulness is strong you can hold on to the tree otherwise you will be swayed by the flood so then how does a mendicant not spread smoke so that so again here i want to say one more thing is that the practice of insight meditation the practice of vipassana meditation and this is so what i practice is under the in the tradition of mahasi sayadaw in that practice what we do is that you know i just pay attention to my eye base or i pay attention to the object which is outside or i pay attention to the consciousness that is arising when the eye contacts the eye base at all times i have some something that i focus on and mahasi's has method is labeling noting method that eye base eye base or object object or consciousness consciousness so i keep myself so that helps you know that 
labeling helps so that practice of always being mindful at all times with this practice that we do it becomes more and more stronger in us so that when the stronger emotions come stronger tendencies come in the conscious awareness they the mindfulness is able to keep keep us whole right so there is a inside meditation playlist also available on the channel so you can check out the meditation the the inside meditation how to do the inside meditation vipassana meditation so you can start doing it daily right okay then how does a mendicant not spread smoke it's when a mendicant doesn't teach others the dhamma in detail as they learn and memorize it spread smoke right smoke is like a cow dung smoke that they they have to spread so that the flies and all they do not come so here buddha is saying you know so mendicant the responsibility of the mendicant is basically to teach the dhamma so why one of the reasons why buddhism buddhism you know uh, kind of in especially in india why it reduced and it be declined is because the mendicants did not go out and teach the dhamma they only remained in their confines of the sangha and they don't go out. so as a mendicant their responsibility is to go out and share the dhamma with the others right and and it's not only i will, I will not say it's only limited to the mendicant it's a, it's something responsibility for all of us if you are listening and and you can also do something in this to spread the dhamma we all have to spread the buddha's dhamma so so that is what a little effort you know a little kind of a kind of initiative that i have taken that this dhamma should not get lost right we have to spread the dharma we cannot just keep it ourselves and just think that we will only practice no it is a dhamma that many many people need it right that is spreading smoke then how does a mendicant not know the ford ford is like the way to the salvation right so it's for a mendicant doesn't go from time to time to those mendicants who are very learned inheritors of the heritage who have memorized the teachings of the who have memorized the the teachings the monastic law and the outlines and ask them questions why so does it say this what does that mean those venerables don't clarify what is clear unclear reveal what is obscure and dispel doubt regarding the doubtful matters so basically the, those who those who do not kind of do further inquiries of the teachings which are not clear they don't progress right so what our responsibility is that if we if we are not clear on something you know we can go ahead and seek help you know there are many learned more experienced people who we have on our path now not necessarily you where you live there is a monastery or some you know which you can easily access so then there are online forums like there is a sutta central forum right where you can come and ask questions then uh, there is a dhammawheel.com that forum is also available where like for uh, 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 questions you can come and ask and get clarity and perspectives on your questions so interact with people and get your doubts resolved or see more videos see more uh, read more commentaries on the particular things like dependent origination if this concept is not getting clear try to get more perspectives do not just remain with your doubts right okay how does a mendicant not know the satisfaction it's when a mendicant when the teaching and training proclaimed by the realized one are being taught finds no inspiration in the meaning of the teaching and finds no joy connected with the teaching right a mendicant who doesn't find joy right then he would not even will remain in the teaching for a long right okay how does a mendicant not know the trail it's when a mendicant doesn't truly understand the noble eightfold path so friends the four noble truth and the noble eightfold path are the core of the buddha's teachings we all have to get a grasp on those teachings all these things the the discourses are all kind of a they give a perspective they give you know they you know they give another f- f- flavor to the basic teachings the core teachings but the core teachings are the more most important so uh, so please do master the core teachings i also have a buddha teachings level 1 course where i have t- explained all the core teachings in short easy to understand videos the link is there in the description you can check that course it's a very normally priced course which helps support the work that i am doing on this channel right so you can check that how a mendicant is not skilled in pastures it's when a mendicant doesn't truly understand the four kinds of mindfulness meditation that's how a mendicant is not skilled in pastures four kinds of mindfulness meditation is meditation of on the form on the uh, body mind feelings and the objects of the mind or the principles right so the buddha in his 
middle discourse is 10 which is the discourse on the four foundations of mindfulness is considered to be one of the most important discourses that Buddha gave and he said that mindfulness of these four things is basically the direct path of liberation for all beings right so if, if a mendicant doesn't practice these four kinds of mindfulness meditation then he is not progressing on the path so there is a separate video that is available four foundations of mindfulness you can just type in the search bar and you'll get that video where I have explained uh, this particular sutta in more detail. Uh, always try to come back to this sutta, try to may maybe take a printout and come back to this sutta again and again uh, because that is what we have to do on a daily basis. Okay, then how does a mendicant milk dry? It's when a mendicant is invited by a householder to accept robes, arms, foods, lodgings, and medicines and supplies for the sick. And that mendicant doesn't know moderation in accepting, right? So if like in, it's more applicable to a householder, a kind of mendicant uh, who who is given by the householder uh, kind of arms, food, robes, and everything, but who is not moderate in his because then see you understand that householder is also you know giving these things from his own savings, right? So you need to be moderate in what you ask, right? Don't milk the entire, don't don't milk the cow dry, right? And how does a mendicant does not show extra respect to seniors, mendicants of long standing, long gone forth, fathers and leaders of the Sangha? It's when a mendicant doesn't consistently treat senior mendicants of long standing, long gone forth, fathers and leaders of the Sangha with kindness by way of body, speech and mind in both public and private. Right? So we have to, all the senior monks and you know who have already achieved a lot, we need to treat them with kindness in public as well as private. A mendicant with these 11 qualities can't, give, can't achieve growth, improvement or maturity in the teaching and training. And then Buddha is giving the reverse example that a cowherd who with 11 factors can maintain and expand a herd of cattle. So it's the same thing Buddha is explaining. Similar way a mendicant with 11 qualities. So what 11? It's when a mendicant knows form, is skilled in characteristics, picks out flies, eggs, dresses wounds, spreads smoke, knows the ford, knows satisfaction, knows the trail is skilled in pastures, doesn't milk dry, shows extra respect to senior mendicants of long standing, uh, long gone forth and fathers and leaders of the Sangha. Right? And then the same thing they, it, is explained, like how does a mendicant know form? It's when a mendicant truly understands that all form is the four primary elements or form derived from the four primary elements. That's how a mendicant knows form. So this is basically the, 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 the sutta, uh, the longer discourse of the cowherd, 11 qualities that a mendicant sh must have. So Let's reflect within ourselves uh, uh, after this video that what are the qualities where we need to do our work. For example, if it's mindfulness meditation, the four fact foundations, if you are not clear, let's go and close this, get a good understanding of that. Right? So let's do a, it's like a good self-evaluation tool uh, uh, what we can use uh, on the path to practicing Buddha's teachings. So I hope this video is useful. Do share your thoughts and comments in the uh, in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.